Hey Kleber here. I want to talk about um, assessing neuro patients. I think one of the challenging things is that neuro changes are pretty slow and subtle and consistent. Oh, that's my my dog back there. He might say hi. That's Tosh. But they're not, it's not like this flip and vital signs or something that might be as obvious. It might be this slow and steady change throughout the shift. So I'm an experienced neuro ICU nurse and I want to chat with you about some tips on how to notice that stuff. Um, one of the most important things to know is it's important to notice that stuff early. You can't just be kicking it, waiting, it, waiting for blown pupils or pupillary changes or vital sign changes. Those are late signs of brain changing, okay? Those are late. You cannot wait for that stuff. You have to have diligent, consistent assessments and being able to step back and look at this full clinical picture and communicate it to providers. So you can't just kind of wait and, until this major thing happens. There's small, consistent changes. And I'm going to go through some ways to um, uh, understand and notice those. Um, I'm mainly talking about maybe critically ill patients, but these could also be floor patients. So the first important thing is to get a baseline assessment. Okay, you're clocking in, you're getting a report from the night shift nurse or the day shift nurse. Do a very quick neural assessment with the previous nurse in the room. You know, hey, ask the orientation questions, get the level of consciousness, look at the pupils. Are they following commands with all four extremities? Do they feel you touching them? Do they understand that you're talking to them? Do an abbreviated neuro assessment with the offgoing nurse to make sure you're on the same page, okay? Because the worst thing is when you, you get a verbal report, 30 minutes later you go in the room to do your assessment and it's different. And you don't know if that change occurred in the last 30 minutes or if that's just you know, the way that they've been all night, but the nurse didn't really um, verbalize it that well or they forgot something. So do your first assessment with the offgoing nurse. Number two, always ask orientation questions. I don't care how with it this person seems like they are, if they're chatting with whomever, say, hey, humor me here, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Can you tell me your name? Where are you right now? Why are you here? What year is it? What month is it? I don't usually ask the day of week because I don't even know what that is. But, <laughs> but I've had very with it patients say it's 1928. Lyndon Johnson's president. Uh, you know what I mean? So you, that it's really important to consistently ask those questions and change them up because patients get asked those very frequently and they learn what questions they need to answer or what they need to say to get you to stop talking to them and to get it over with. So change up the questions, you know, especially if you're doing two Q2 two hour neuros. So always ask orientation questions. Get your baseline assessment ask your orientation questions. Number three, as you're going through your shift and you notice something different, ask yourself, is this a consistent, repeatable change? Okay, so maybe I'm, I've got my intubated patient, right, with um, a subarachnoid hemorrhage, and I'm assessing their drift. I'm having them hold their arms up, and now they're having a little bit of a drift. But I'm like, wait a sec, that's new. Now I'm not going to stop everything and run and call a physician. I'm going to wait a little bit and I'm going to come back in and I'm going to say, hey, wait, are we drifting now? Again, is this consistent? Is this repeatable? Don't call the physician for every little single change because neuro patients are dynamic. They change and then they go back and then you want to, you want to get a consistent, repeatable change to communicate. Now don't, I mean, if you think you need to call them, call them. I'm not going to tell you that don't call them ever, but Use your clinical judgment and ask yourself, can I make, is this person, uh, is this patient consistent with this change? Or is this kind of a fluke thing that maybe it's not, I don't know what that was. So I'm going to, I'm going to recreate, I'm going to wait a little bit, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pull another nurse in and I'm going to see if they can get the patient to do that again too. Or if this was just kind of a one-time thing. So ask yourself, is this consistent? Is this repeatable? Um, the next one, consider um, factors that might be um, changing the clinical picture. For neuro patients, fever is a big one, okay? For every degree that you have a change um, in temperature, I believe it, it increases the ICP a certain amount or something with the um, cerebral, you know, metabolism or whatever. Fever is a big deal with neuro patients, okay? Fever is a huge deal. So, you know, a 99.2, you might not be treating in with another patient, but with that neuro patient, you want to treat that. You want to look at your Tylenol, your antipyretics, and their indications and aggressively treat 
fever. Normothermia is essential with neuro patients. So if they're doing something new, check their temperature. If they're doing something new, what was their sodium today? Have they had a lot of fluids? Have they had a lot of output? Consider their labs. I can't tell you, man, I've seen some patients that they get hyponatremic and that just totally changes their neuro assessment. We get it, we get a BMP, we give them some salt water, some hypertonic saline, and they're back to the normal um, assessment that we had before. So know their labs, know their fever. Hey, have they had pain medicine? Pain medicine really affects an assessment. The first sign of changing level of, of changing ICP is a decreasing level of consciousness, y'all. And what do pain meds do? They make you sleepy. So you use those pain meds very um, um, planned, sporadically, no, consider the fact that they've gotten this or this, you know, because you don't want to over-medicate because that can um, change your assessment, all right? My next one, notice spontaneous movements, all right? This is particularly for the, you know, the patient who's not responsive. Maybe they're intubated, maybe they're not. Uh, but we want to know, are they making purposeful movement? So one of the things I like to do before I even touch the patient, and I'm getting a report or I'm doing something else, I'm just watching what they're doing. Like, is he like just twitching his arm or is he moving his arm to scratch his other arm? That's purposeful. That's, that's, like, that's good. I want to make sure I note it. Note, hey, he's, he's scratching his leg. He just itched his nose or, you know, that kind of thing. That's purposeful. I've had patients, I wasn't sure if they knew what was going on and they flicked me off. Well, that sure is purposeful. Purposeful movement, noted. <laughs> I didn't write they flicked me off, but I charted that there was purposeful movement. <laughs> Um, there's that or but then if they're if they're just kind of twitching or moving but it's not really purposeful that's also an important thing to note so you want to as you're progressing through your shift think back to that baseline assessment because sometimes it's hours later it's this slowly subtle change and it's like hey this morning when I walked into the room and I said their name op they opened their eyes five hours later I had to do a trap pinch to keep them awake for the assessment that's a change. So considering the whole clinical picture and the progress from assessment one to now, is this a big change? So you have to kind of step back and think, because it might not be a big change from that last assessment, but when you think three, four hours earlier, five, six, eight hours earlier, and this is a totally different patient, that's a change. And you don't want to wait for that doctor to come in the next day and say, oh yeah, they're sleepier. Like, no, it's up to that nurse to notice this decreasing level of consciousness and communicate that to the provider. And this goes to my next one. One of the most important things about being an, an effective neuro ICU nurse is not just noticing the changes, but communicating them and quantifying them to providers. Okay, So you're not saying, well, they're a little sleepier. Say, okay, this morning when I walked in the room and I said Mr. Smith, he opened his eyes immediately. Now when I go into his room, I have to do a, a trap pinch to get him to open his eyes. That's quantifying it, as opposed to saying they're sleepier. Or um, I could get him like to respond with this, but now it's taking this. Um, you know, like those kinds of things. You want to be able to quantify it when you call, so that the provider can say, "Wait a sec, that definitely is a change. This isn't just someone like, oh, maybe like kind of." flippantly calling because they have to call but no hey I have a concern this is this is the concern it, they've gone from this to this these are maybe some of the factors hey he had a fever so I gave him some Tylenol I thought it was the fever but then you know now he's now he's 98 6 and he's He's still doing this. He still won't open his eyes. His left side is weaker. His speech is more slurred. Um, like those kinds of things. You want to be able to quantify the change when you communicate with providers. So let me recap here. Number one, do that baseline assessment with that offgoing nurse. Number two, always ask those orientation questions. Number three, ask yourself, is this change consistent and repeatable? Pull another nurse in if you need to. Uh, number four, consider um, the other factors that may be changing your assessment like fever, pain medicine, um, and, and uh, maybe there's sodium or some lab values. Um, again, notice those spontaneous movements. And finally, communicate to providers confidently and quantify the changes. So those y'all are my, my tips for you guys taking care of neuro patients. I hope this helps. Thanks, nurses. Stay fresh.